Welcome to On the Hardwood, brought to you by SUV TV, assistant basketball coach, and allmetrohoops.com. Uh, we're here at the Wheel of Hoops Classic today, uh, sponsored by Adidas in this beautiful arena um, that just opened up this year. And uh, he's Desmond Eastman. I'm Horace Naismith. And we have a special guest, Justin Young from hoopscene.com, here to share some of his insights on Georgia recruiting. Uh, and uh, the state of Georgia Hoops basketball. Justin, how you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Appreciate you guys having me on your show. <laughs> I've enjoyed watching it. Uh, it's, it's, it's been great. It's, this is our second show, and we hope just continue to get better having people like you on the show. I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. you. Um, tell us, what's going on in Georgia Hoops uh, recruiting? Man, a lot's going on. This 2017 class, we just had the early signing period. Uh, just closed here in early November, and Georgia was really – we've known this place to be a hotbed for recruiting. And we have saw that with this class of 2017 where we had 37 guys sign early with Division I schools, which by my indication is the most of any state in the country, even more than California, more than Texas, and more than Florida, the three states that generally lead the nation in recruiting. So, uh, you know, we're in a great spot. We've known this class is one of the deepest classes we've mm -hmm. seen in probably the last decade. And, and uh, all the things that we've kind of projected over the last three or four years watching these guys have really come to fruition. So it's been fun to see these guys. Um, you know, see the culmination of their of their work, you know, hit its head and they sign their papers. So uh, it's been a lot of fun with this class, no doubt about it. It's, it's, it's been imp it's impressive when you just think about what you just said about California and Texas, two very large states, the two largest states in America, um, aside from New York in terms of popula population. And for Georgia to, to lead the nation uh, in signings is very impressive. The class is deep. Uh, it's deep outside the city, too. It's just not the city. It's outside the city as well, which is uh, always good for the state of basketball uh, to have players outside of a metropolitan area that are also signing Division I scholarships. You know, it reminds me of Horace probably 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 13, 14 years ago when we had Dwight Howard and Randolph Morris and Josh Smith and all those guys. You know, think about Jamario Davidson. He went, When he was here, him and Josh had battles. And when I look at this class of 2017, we've got – elite level talent at the top. We've got Wendell Carter who's going to Duke. We've got Colin Sexton who's going to Alabama. We've got MJ Walker, a top 30 level player. And when you have that type of talent at the top, and you look back at those old days when you had Dwight and Randolph and, and Josh and all those guys going at each other, when the top bar, when the top guys push that bar higher, mm -hmm. everybody else yeah. behind it follows. That's right. And we've seen the depth of this class, and we talked about it before we started the show, we not only have high-level talent with the elite-level guys, McDonald's mm -hmm. All-American all guys, we've got guys that are going to be all-conference players at the mid-level. We've got guys that are going to be all-conference players at the, at the lower uh, major level. And then that trickles down, too, to the non-division one. So top to bottom, the health of this class, we're getting players that are going into college next year that are going to be prepared. They're going to see, you know, I project to play large minutes, and, and a lot of them are going to be starters and potentially all-conference guys. So. Uh, very healthy class, and it starts with the top, and, right. and those guys setting the bar and everybody following suit. So uh, it's been fun to cover. I, I mean, think about it, guys. We have a beautiful silly here today. You guys have a great event going on. At the start of the season, we had five teams from Georgia in the top 25. Impressive. And, and I don't know if I've ever seen that ever in the history of our state. Do you I can't think, remember. Do you think that success of individual talent can come late to a great team playing and some of these high school teams winning some major tournaments like City of Palms, Beach Ball, the uh, Tournament of Champions, possibly winning the national championship because that's one of the things that's been missing in high school basketball. We always have great players in the state of Georgia, but nationally the teams never perform the way they're supposed to. Yeah, I think we're getting there, and I think you're right. Like I think we saw that with, you know, Particularly recently, you know, we, 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 you know, you know, you're pretty obviously connected to what Wheeler did at City of Palms, and um, you know, I think that certainly changed the narrative. Where a lot of times you mentioned New York, a lot of teams you think about, you know, those great teams from New York, or you think about like, the modern days from California, mm -hmm. or you think about some of these other powerhouses that we know so well, maybe even the Midwest from Indiana, and I think Georgia, with our high-level talent, and you're right, Des. With these high-level talents now, we're certainly raising the bar in the notoriety for a lot of these teams, and I think. It's all come to the head, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Think about it. five teams at the beginning of the season where finally the nation's going, oh, you know what? Those guys in Georgia have been telling us for years, and they're starting to There's finally good listen. good basketball yeah. down here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No question We're not about just it. a football state anymore. No, not at yeah. all. I think this started changing in the early 2000s, and it's been consistently true uh, up to this point. And I, I see that continuing with some of the uh, young kids we have in Georgia. Well, I think it kind of goes hand-in-hand, hand too, with the city of Atlanta and Holt, right? When mm -hmm. the Olympics came, our city really grew up. Mm -hmm. 
uh, our, you know, I moved here in 96, a lot of other people moved here, and just the city got bigger and mm -hmm. bigger, the sprawl started to happen more and more, but you're also right too, that some of our best players we've ever had in the state weren't even Atlanta kids. No. You know, no. they were South Georgia guys, they were Savannah guys, they were guys in Augusta, and so you take all that other talent outside of the city of Atlanta, and then, you, and then you mix it together with all the talent that we have here with our city as it grows, as it's grown, we've seen our talent expand, and we right. really, you know, I think Atlanta as a whole, for any sport, I mean, we see that with baseball, we see that with football, we see that with other other sports. Our city is in general uh, is really becoming quite quite the place for you know high school amateur talent. You made a, a really good point regarding uh, what you think these kids are going to do at the next level. 2017 kids in college, if there's any indication. The 2016 kids are performing very well uh, nationally at the schools that they're at, uh, which, which, is, which is great. It's great for, uh, for Georgia. It's great for the kids coming up behind them to see that they can be successful at that next level. Let's talk about um, some of these uh, players, where they're going to school at, and uh, let, let's start with Wendell Carter. Why not, why not start at the start top? Start at the top. <laughs> yeah. Why not? I mean, he's certainly, uh, to me, a once-in-a-decade player that we've seen in our state. Um, you know, Derek Favors was probably like the last dominant big guy that we've seen. Tony Parker certainly had the accolades, but Wendell Carter to me is, a, is just a whole different animal. We have him number one overall in our national rankings, which kind of goes against the narrative to most people. Um, but to me, like when you compare him to a guy like DeAndre Ayton, you look at a guy like Michael Porter, you look at all the other guys that are at the top, I think there's a number of guys that you can make an argument no for, question. for the number one spot. For me, it's consistency. And when I've seen Wendell Carter go head to head, like we had Wendell Carter and DeAndre Ayton playing over at, at 20 Sports Academy from Nike Memorial Day, and Wendell dominated the matchup. And he's playing against not only just DeAndre Ayton, but he's playing Brandon. against Brandon McCoy, who yeah. was also a top 10 guy. Mm -hmm. And I know what my eyes see. And, and, and doing this as long as that we've all been doing this, is that sure, pro projections and, and what they're going to be is, mm -hmm. is certainly fine and good, and we rely on that right. quite heavily. But I know what my eyes have seen time and time and time again. And to me, he's just the most consistent guy. And so for me, consistency is really important. And I, somebody compared him to Elton Brand. I thought that was a very good comparison. I, I like to compare him a little bit to Chris Weber. Both of those guys <laughs> played over a dozen years in the NBA. And as you guys both know, that's one of the hardest things to do in all of sport, to have that longevity in the NBA. And I think that's the type of player that Wendell is. And we've seen him get better every time out. He's well, gotten better. What you know. about um, also Duke came in and, and, and nabbed Alex O'Connell from Milton? Yeah. That was surprising to a lot of people. Yeah, I think so. I think Georgia Tech really needed that kid. Um, you know, I know Josh Passner's staff made him a priority. But you know what? When Coach K comes in and you look at all the changes players. Changes the dynamics. Yeah, and he offered and he took it, and that story ended pretty yeah. quickly. And, you know, his dad played there, and there's certainly some intrigue there. And, you know, I think Alex kind of fits the mold of the types of players that have had success in, in, in the past at Duke. There's no denying the confidence level of Alex O'Connell. No, no question that, about that can it. Get out there and, and be. And his and his game has grown. His game has grown every year since I've seen him play from eighth grade to this year. Right. Uh, his game has grown. He's added some things. It used to be just strictly a jump shooter. He's trying to go to the basket a lot more uh, and finishing plays. Uh, he's trying to do better creating uh, for others uh, uh, off the dribble. So I think Alex uh, and Duke coming in and offering him and him going to uh, Duke wasn't a big surprise to me because of what you said. His dad went to school there. Uh, so, and of course, as you say, Coach K comes in. It's like when Cal comes in. It kind of changes everything. Yeah, I mean, everyone's work just goes out the door. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's hard to say, no, listen, if you're in that position and, you know, listen, you've, you've driven a really nice Honda Accord your whole life and someone shows up with a Tesla, you, get, you take the <laughs> Tesla every no time, question. right? No question. Here's something else that's interesting with Duke. William Avery was the last player from Georgia to be recruited by Duke, and that was the late 90s. So it took 20 years, basically, for them to come back to Georgia and, and land a player. They landed two. Right. And I don't know if I, ever, I can remember a time in the Coach K era where they've had two guys from the state from, of Georgia. From, all from, from the same state. Yeah, no question about it. No question about it from, you know, from here in the Peach State. So uh, certainly a great class and, and, and one that I think uh, all of us here in the, the Georgia basketball scene will certainly be watching closely with those guys because they're no great question. kids too. Yeah, no question let's about take, it. Let's take this time. Let's talk about Xavier. Chris Mack has done a great job in recruiting the Georgia area. Last year he got the guy from uh, St. Francis. Um, Kaiser, Kaiser Gates. Kaiser Gates. This year he nabbed Elias Harden and, and, and the guy from the kid from Macon, Ken Jones. Travis Jones. That's big for that program. Huge. You know, Chris Mack has been a guy that's actively recruited Atlanta. You know, we, we hear this all the time, Horace. Oh, I'm an Atlanta guy. I recruit Atlanta. Right. A lot of guys say that. Yeah. Very few guys actually pull actually it off. Actually do it. Right. Chris Mack and his staff, they've actively recruited Georgia uh, for a long time. In fact, Chris Mack and, and Mark Fox are really good friends. Chris is down here all the time. Mm -hmm. um, 
and, and that you're right. They've got – Kaiser Gates was a super important prospect for them. Elias Harden, I think, really fits the mold of the type of player that that, that Xavier's had, a guy right. that can shoot. He's gotten better at Pebble Brook, certainly learning to play a, a little faster pace. But, I, you know, we just saw Contravious Jones last weekend. at had the a Holiday. great game. I didn't even know who that guy was. Bull in the China shot, man. He threw his weight around. He scored inside. Uh, he rebounded. He even knocked down a jump shot, which, uh, you know, kind of surprised me. I've seen him play a few times. Yep. I've never seen him stretch his game out beyond 12 feet. And he knocked down a 17-footer on the wing. And uh, if he could do that, I don't know if that's really part of his game, but if he could do that, Xavier's getting a really good player because they do really well with those big kids. Absolutely. They do really well. You know, when they signed him, there was a lot of people like, man, are they really taking this guy? Right. And if you talk to that staff, like, listen, think about the guy. I can't remember his name, but he drove the Uber. Remember the stories of the big guy that drove the Uber? Uber. The, you know, it was like, <laughs> like a 6'10", 300-pound dude. Right. And they, they got 10.6 rebounds out of him. Right. Contravious Jones has gotten better every year. He, 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 he constantly has this battle of staying in shape, which I get. Um, but he's going to do great there, and that mentality as he goes up there. Chris Mack is a hard dude, and he's going to push Contravious. And I think he's one of those guys that is a sophomore, junior in college that everybody goes, where did this guy come right. from? But we've, se- we've seen that kind of happen here over the last 12 months with him, and I- I'm really excited. I thought he was fantastic last weekend. He was. And he did it against Norcross, one of the best teams there is. Yeah, with uh, Louisville and the Georgia signee on, on that squad, so that's not bad. Um, I think, you know, when you talk about Contravious, I've had a few college coaches actually call me about him over the last few days, and they're, they're, they're disappointed yeah. that they weren't in on that yeah. kid, you know, after seeing him play last weekend. So, no, good luck to, uh, uh, to Contravious. I think he's going to do a great job. Let's talk about Colin Sexton. Colin Sexton probably, <laughs> as, uh, as, a, as a player, from a fan standpoint, probably has a bigger following than any other player in the state. Um, he's a tough player to stop. He's entertaining without question. And uh, t- w- w- your thoughts, Alabama, uh, his fit. So let me rewind a little bit. Okay. okay. Do you guys remember? Okay, so Dwight Howard to me is the best player that I've ever covered in the state of Georgia at the prep level, and I think will probably be the best player I'll ever cover from the prep level. That's just me. But he was not the most popular player at the time. Lewis Williams. Lewis Williams. Lewis Williams. I was about to say Lewis Williams. That Who actually was my favorite high school player. Why? Because he, he always delivered. He was entertaining. Nailed it. You enjoyed watching him play. I, it was 50 bucks to get in the game. I'd pay 50 to get in because I'll I enjoyed for, watching him. I totally agree. I'll never forget going to South Gwinnett. And I remember walking past because I had my media pass. You know, I'm going to the door. I pass Mike Vick. I pass Luda. I passed Chipper Jones, and I remember just thinking to myself that he was a junior, I think, at the time, and I remember th- it just blew my mind right. that I'm walking past all these dudes. First of all, they're standing in line outside of South Cadet, <laughs> which is amazing <laughs> in itself. But at last weekend, when you looked at the crowd, it was like, have you ever been to a boxing match in Vegas? I haven't. Okay, so when the boxer comes in, everything changes. Right. The energy changes, and that's what it was like watching Colin Sexton. I haven't seen that type of excitement and that type of entertainment that I haven't seen since Lewis Williams. And Colin Sexton kind of falls in that same vein yeah. where there's um, this cult following in a very good and entertaining way. And to me, he's the most entertaining player there is in the class nationally right. because of that entertainment value that it brings to the table. Alabama got in there super early. How many times do you hear Bill Self lose out, especially to a team like Alabama? Right. Yeah, Never. rarely ever. Ever. Yeah. Well, I believe, I believe the Alabama situation for Colin's future – and he wants to be a pro player. Sure. I think the mentorship of Avery would do well for him and look good on his resume. And I think Avery can teach him some things about the game that can help benefit him in the future. So I think they looked at that, and they also they looked at the proximity, him being close to home. Closer to home would have been Georgia. Closer to home would have been Tech. But I think it's a good situation. Big games. You got uh, Kentucky. You got te- Texas A&M, which has, you know what I mean, a good following in, in the SEC, Florida. You got South Carolina, who's been good pat in, in, in the past years. I mean, it's a good situation for him. I think um, it's left to be seen. Well, all these kids have rough edges, right? Absolutely. There's, there's nobody going into yep. college that is 100% ready. And I think what Avery brings to the table for Colin, he can smooth out those rough edges. And him being a former pro at that position that Colin wants to play, I think as far as the, the, the mix and the connection between those two, I think it was perfect. Well, you look at their class, too. Their class is tremendous. you got 
you know, John Petty, a mm -hmm. top 25 guy, potential another McDonald's All-American in-state guy that can really score. Kind of reminds me of those players that Godfrey had in the early 2000s, the Rod Grisards, those guys that, that were long, that could shoot, that could score, attack the rim. Then you mix in, the, you know, their class they have now. Braxton Key is just a, you know, you, you're very familiar with him, a, a five-tool basketball player mm -hmm. that can really pass. Then you look at Alex Reese, you look at um, – uh, I'm drawing blanks here on who else they, they brought in. Just a tremendous I think the plus. point, and the point that, that, that should be um, highlighted is the fact that Avery's keeping some of those Alabama kids in Alabama. In Alabama. Yeah. And that's really key. Uh, Alabama's never really deep in talent, but if you can keep the top level in your state, you're doing a good job. Well, Curry. Auburn's done that a great job, yeah. too, you know, with Austin Wiley and the guys they've got coming in. And, and certainly we saw Bruce Pearl, you know, for two straight days at Holiday Hoops given right there front and center. Not just Bruce. The whole the staff. Yeah, the, whole, the whole staff. Yeah, yeah it was a full-on <laughs> coaching meeting there for the Tigers there at the deal. And you're right. And, and that, to me, is what we talked about earlier, how the top guys raise the level for everybody else. Well, when Bruce Pearl got the job, mm -hmm. he, he went guns a-blazing and got some big-time players. Avery Johnson came in, got you know some important commitments. Didn't Terrence Ferguson never made it. But this year was the year where Avery said, hey, I, right. don't forget about us, too. And to me, that breeds great basketball. And, no and, and overall, the SEC, I think, with those guys, doing what they've done. Uh, we've seen the SEC kind of take a dip a little bit. I think these two classes for those two programs will really certainly raise the bar and, and make those guys go even harder in the league. Uh, no question. I uh, spoke to, to Bruce briefly uh, last weekend, and he made it a point to say, uh, if I could recruit Georgia, let's talk about outside of Alabama, if I could recruit Georgia and get one or two players out of Georgia every year, I'm going to be successful. Yeah. And, and he's done he's that. He's done it. He's done that. Um, and, and we're going to segue into – one of the players that uh, he's he signed and got committed, or two of the players, I should say, uh, Chumo Kiki. Uh, what are your thoughts on Chuma and his fit? And and it's a player that I love. I think you talk about Braxton Key being a 5-2 player. I think Chuma Kiki is the same player, uh, a little bit bigger. And, of course, Davion Mitchell. Well, so Davion, before the – Ascension of Colin Sexton. Davion, to me, was one of the few guys where I'd be like, you know what, I'll open my wall and pay for a ticket to go watch that guy. Right. Pure entertainment. Uh, he's gotten a lot better. His, his perimeter game is, is continuing to develop uh, and becoming more reliable. But, I, I mean, if I was Gus Malzahn, I'm banging on that dorm room door going, hey, man, listen, you want to play running back? <laughs> go for it. Because that's how he plays. And he you was a running he, back he, back he, in the, back in the middle school he, days. You know who he reminds me of? Who's that? Pac-Man Jones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At Westlake. Yeah. Same yeah. exact yeah. type of player. Same exact. Fearless. Or oh, Tack Miner at um, – Tack Miner a great Miner from, from yep. Louisiana. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, that's, that's old school. That, that is, is old school. <laughs> I, had to go back. I, had to think, I had to think about that one for a second. But, but Chumo Keke, as you look at these classes, is every great team that wins a championship has a Chumo Keke, okay? A guy that doesn't necessarily play in a style that says, hey, look what I do. Right. But at the end of the day, you look at the box score, you're like, holy cow, the guy had 25 points, 15 rebounds, seven of them offensive, a tremendous passer, great hands. He doesn't look incredibly athletic but he's winning rebounding battles all the time. And to me, as you watch a guy like that and you start to see the talent come around him, think about how effective Austin Wiley is going to be when you've got a guy like Chumo Keke that's just going to go out there and do the dirty work. Right. And, and Bruce Pearl, to his credit, has always had a player like that. I think about Tobias Harris when he was at Tennessee, mm -hmm. a guy that was terrific on the class at the college level. And, you know, I don't know if we ever saw the best Tobias Harris in college. But he's again. He's gonna be. It was like seven year, eight yeah, year pro been now. Been in league for a minute, yeah. And so Chumo Keke, I think, has a very similar value to him and what he brings to the table. And another guy that just he gets better every single time. Yeah. You know? He does it without the fanfare. He's not looking for no. anything extra outside of I want to win. So he, he, he does winning things. He, he makes winning, winning plays yep. on both sides of the ball. I watched him play a game last year where uh, Westlake was down. I can't remember the, uh, the team they were playing against. And he got four consecutive steals because of his length and his anticipation that changed the game. And they came back and won that game. So, you know, when I look at him, he's a player – that, again, I, I'm not real sure we've seen the best of what he could really bring. Totally agree with you. You know, yeah. I, I'm not real sure about that. And, of course, you know, uh, Davion, Davion, uh, his electricity, his athleticism, his explosiveness, his jump shot has, has gotten better. He hit, I think, five threes last weekend yeah. in, in, yep. in that game. So if he can continue uh, to do that, he's going to open up all parts of his game. There's something about Liberty County kids, too, that I don't think a lot of people understand is, you know, my brother – coached in the D-League for a long time, and now he's with the 76ers. 
on their staff as assistant coach. But he had Jordan McRae in the D League, and Jordan McRae was probably his favorite player he's ever coached. Jordan McRae is a Liberty County kid, mm -hmm. and he said all that guy did was he just wanted to compete and he wanted to win. And it was and, and Jordan McRae, you know where he could, a lot of guys come back here to Atlanta, some guys go out to LA in the offseason. Jordan McRae goes back to Hinesville, Georgia. And guess who's in the gym? Davion Mitchell. Right. Will Richardson. And he's turning that competitive spirit. I mean the guy won a championship ring with the Cavs last year. Yeah. You know? So you go back to Hinesville, Georgia and you got the you got the diamonds on your finger and you get this young buck that's going out to Auburn now and you're instilling that competitive drive in him. Not that Davion needed any help in that regard. That's right. But there's something about those guys that are down there. I think about Ryan Brown. Ryan you think Brown. about all these it's, other guys. I, I think it's a small town mentality. Well, yeah, it's a military they, town too. They have to do in a small town. You have to do ten times more just to get noticed. And I feel those kids, they just play the game at, at a different rate, different pace. Yeah. They play harder. It, each possession means more to them. And well, look at look at JJ Frazier at Georgia too. He's also a Hinesville kid. Right. Right. kid. Yeah. You know, he's got a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. And I don't think the three of us ever thought he'd be as good as he's been. That kid was is all conference player last it's year, second team all conference. So fearless. You know, they've done a good job up there. When when, when Georgia gets a kid. They do a good job developing the kids. Well, let's let, let's talk about that because um, you mentioned uh, this is one of the deepest class ever. Yep. And you're talking about uh, uh, ten top 100s in the ESPN in 2017 are from Georgia. Why, not bad. Ten percent. Why can't these kids stay home? Well, they got a good one though. I mean, let's not let's not overlook Rayshon Hammond. Yeah, going he's very to, good. To Norcross, and they beat some really good teams. Miami. Uh, I thought was probably the team. They beat BCU. They beat uh, Memphis. I mean, they beat some really good teams to get them. Certainly to me, I, I think I understand the argument and I understand the question. Um, and I think what happens is, let, let me ask you a question. How many how many Division One schools are there in the state of Georgia? You got four. Georgia Southern, Georgia State, Georgia Tech, Mercer. Georgia, Mercer. Kennesaw. Kennesaw, That's Jacks, um, Savannah, Savannah state. state. That's it. That's it. So think about how many Division One schools there are. Think about how many there are in the state of North Carolina. There's over 20. There's over 15 in the state of Louisiana. So when you look at the numbers, a lot of times it's a numbers game. I understand the question. Georgia, to me, is probably one of the top two or three most over-recruited states there is. I remember going to the airport one time. I was flying out somewhere, and it was like 11 o'clock at night. And I ran into a coach from Boise State, and I said, what are you doing here? <laughs> he goes, oh, I was recruiting a kid in Atlanta. And I'm thinking, listen, I respect your hustle, but I've never seen a kid ever go to Boise. And they did get one. They did. Uh, James the, Webb. It, James it, Webb. Who, who's from Savannah. Augusta. But he took the uh, long Augusta, road there. Right. But, you know, but, but to, to your question, I think our state's so over-recruited, and rightfully so, because we have high-level talent and guys that go. With Georgia in particular, you look at what they've done. So they get two really good kids from South Georgia, Tyree Crump and Jordan Harris. To me, guys that I think both have a chance to be three-year starters for the Bulldogs, especially when J.J. leaves. Tyree, I think, goes in that role. Jordan Harris, a guy that won a state championship, very talented guy. Then you look at, you know, Will Jackson. I think injuries slowed him down, but they got a good one, a local kid in him. Rayshon, to me, was probably the most significant recruit they've got. I agree. They've been in the mix with, I mean, Wendell was certainly in the mix. You know, Colin, Darius, 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 Darius Perry. Perry. They, were, they were in the mix. It's difficult to close. They were in the mix with Elias. They're in there a lot. And, and your question is, why can't they close it? I don't know. I don't know that answer. Uh, but I know that here, here's something that I've thought about a lot. In Georgia Tech's the same thing. Brian Gregory and his staff recruited almost exclusively Georgia, and that didn't work out. And that didn't work out. Here, here's a trivia question. So the kids that are now sophomores and juniors in college that are from the state of Georgia, I think there was over 130 kids that played Division One basketball. Of that 130 guys, and that, how many of those guys played, just not one, but have played an NCAA double, double A tournament game? Do you guys have any idea? No, I don't. 130 think, uh, guys. Yeah. Two. Kaiser Gates. No. And Xavier. No, he's a freshman. Or he's a sophomore now? He's a sophomore, sophomore now. now. So it would be three then. It would be three. Yeah. Three. That's the only one I could think of off the top of my head. So three guys out of 103 guys. If even Isaiah Wilkins, Jalen Brown, yeah. Kaiser Gates. Yeah. So if you think about that, and I'm not knocking our guys in our state. That's not my point. That's not my intention. But there's always this question mark of why can't Georgia – is that really the guy that we need to go get if we're if trying to make a tournament? Well, I think information is key, right? I talked to a parent who um, didn't go to Georgia, kid didn't go to Georgia, and the reason why uh, they felt that Georgia uh, was one of the bottom feeders in the SEC. 
not realizing Georgia has the third best record in the last five years behind Kentucky and Florida. Not bad company. Not bad company. All right, they got a great coach up there. But in their mindset, it's like they don't, the perception is it's not a good program when really that's not the reality. And they got a really, really good coach up there. So it's really – and it's really up to them. You got you to gotta change – the people's perception you can't expect them to change unless you help them change it and it's a personality thing i i think if um and and this is i know fox personally and this is my reach to him i think if if we see him in more high school gyms and they get to know him you know shake hands kiss babies i think they would understand what he can do because these same kids that you said didn't make the tournament at the other other universities i guarantee you if they were with fox he would make a difference in them because those are the same those those are the JaVale McGee's when he was at. Sure, at yeah. Those are the Ramon, uh, Ramon Sessions, yeah. the Kirk Snyders, the Nick Fasikas. Those were the Kentavious Caldwells, the uh, Howard Tompkins, the Travis Leslie's. Those are the ones that he can make a difference with, the ones that are not top 100. Mm -hmm. But with his teachings and his tut tutelage, they become successful. But for them to understand who he is, I think he has to be more personable. I think he has to be in these gyms more. I didn't see him at all at Hoops Given. I was disappointed. You know what I mean? I saw Bruce Pearl. I saw Josh Pastner. I saw Bruce Pearl. I thought he was getting water for some of the guys. <laughs> That's how much I saw him. He didn't get me any water. I wish you'd have got me some. Uh, yeah, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> but well, if, I, I, if they give Fox the opportunity, we would see a difference in Georgia basketball. I, I think what it also takes, though, too, does is it takes – somebody to be a leader and say, you know what, I see an opportunity there for me to go change the culture of that program. I see an opportunity. Like, I think we have a lot of kids in our state that are very comfortable in following, but very few are comfortable in leading. leading. I think Colin, Colin and Wendell together would have changed the dynamic. Uh, entirely, entirely. Yeah, well, I think they would have changed the dynamics anywhere they would have went. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think Sean Hammond, to your original point, yeah is a kid that could help change that. Totally agree you know with what you. Mean? Because That's why he is a so top important. five player yep. in the state. Yep. You know, you saw him last weekend. You know, he played well both Friday and Saturday night. And I just think he's a kid that could help other Georgia players say it's okay to go to Georgia. Go to Georgia. And it needed somebody to yeah. step up and say, and that's why you look at Georgia Tech on the flip side, that's why MJ Walker to me was the most important prospect for Josh Pastor and his staff when they got the job, mm -hmm. not Wendell, because I thought Wendell was already so far baked with, with Duke. Duke. Yeah. That MJ Walker's that kid where another kid may say, you know, Kayvon Moore may go, oh, man, MJ's there. Right. And that's why I still think that he's the most important prospect for Josh Pastor and his staff moving forward because they need somebody to, to, to validate their decision. Again, it's not a knock on our guys. I don't know. I think we have a lot of guys that are very comfortable in following versus a lot of guys that are comfortable in making a decision that right. maybe goes against the grain. And I think Ray Sean, to your point, and even for kids in Atlanta didn't really know Jordan Harris and Tyree Crump all that well, but those were super important recruits mm -hmm. for the in-state guys um, moving forward. I, I still go back to, to me, it's a numbers game. The amount of guys that we have for the number of Division One schools that we have, it's always going to look like so many guys leave the state. Well, there's just so many spots guys can go get. Especially when you start talking about the high major uh, situation with Georgia and Georgia Tech being the two schools here in Georgia. Yeah. You know, at, 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 at best, maybe they could take three each a year. So you're talking about six kids. Everybody else is going to go someplace Well, else. then you take Georgia Tech. So their academics allow them to recruit a little yeah. different guy. So they're going to maybe go get an international guy, okay? They're maybe going to go to Chicago and get a kid. They're going to maybe find a high-level kid in Denver, Colorado that mm -hmm. wants to study engineering. And that – so to me, you take that number down even to maybe four or five right. because of that type of thing that they do. You right, know? So, right. I mean, I understand the narrative. I totally get it. But that narrative to me has been there as long as I've lived in the state of Georgia for the state of Georgia. Right. And if the guys that get back, even look at even the Hayes brothers, you know, they transferred in after not being recruited. Now, there's a little different story. But, you know, a lot of times it's the long way around or a guy like Contavious Caldwell Pope, he was going to – he's a Georgia – I mean, he's a small town. Georgia fit him maybe a lot better – yeah. than Georgia Tech would yeah, no, or no you question. Know, somewhere else. But no question. I think it's a discussion that we have to have in our state. And, you know, to your point, I mean, we've seen Avery Johnson in our state a lot. We've seen Bruce Pearl in our state a lot. And, you know, I think that has a lot to, you know, do with some decisions. Hey, Georgia, think, Georgia's think, fertile think, ground, I think so Fox and, I think Fox and Pastner has to have to have a uh, some type of security at the airport. 
<laughs> and have these coaches check in every time protect they come to the state. borders. Protect the borders. <laughs> With uh, homeland, homeland security. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, to close out our um, our segment here on, on recruiting, let's talk about a couple of kids that were under the radar yeah, absolutely. that have been uh, playing f fabulous basketball. Let's talk about Javon Green and J.D. Note. What are yeah. your thoughts on those two kids? Well, we saw Javon Green come in and just absolutely kill it our best of South in July and had a lot of guys looking at him. Uh, one of our guys, Corey Evans, was really close with George Mason. Hey, you need to come watch just down here and, and just try to find somebody. And, and they fell in love with what Green did at the Best of South and earned a scholarship. And, and uh, we knew that he was going to be good. He came to our elite camp in March, played with a really good Atlanta All-Stars team, and just kept working, kept working, kept getting better. And I think George Mason stole a kid. He got a good one. He really scored 57 one. points last week in a holiday hoops giving against uh, Langston Hughes. I think a guy that can really help Dave Paulson and his staff out quite a bit up there at Mason. And J.D. Note to me, is really a, an interesting Newton. Newton's been a Final Four team. Uh, Coach Rasmussen's done a terrific job out there with those guards. Uh, Jacksonville was really the only uh, – a couple other schools. But Jacksonville made him a priority early. And you look at the Atlantic Sun, there's only eight teams in the league. And if you've gone over to Kennesaw before, it's a very guard um, favorable league. No and question. J.D. Note is a guy that can shoot. He can score. Uh, he's only six foot. Maybe he scored, uh, scared a couple of people off. But he's battle tested, and he can shoot, and he can attack the rim. And I think he's a guy I project as a guy that can be an all-conference level player. No question. I, another guy, too, is Noah Gurley that, that's going to Furman. Classic late bloomer, 6'8". Big slim. Big slim. <laughs> Fayette County. <laughs> yeah, Fayette County can really shoot the three. Uh, I think what we've seen, Furman's done a nice job of getting kids from the state of Georgia and develop them. Daniel Fowler's developed into a starter up there from Alatoona. Uh, they feel very strongly about Noah Gurley up there, another guy that kind of slipped under the radar a little bit uh, that I think could be a really good player at the next level. Right, right. Well, listen, I want to thank you for uh, on, the, on the hardwood. On the behalf of On the Hardwood, thank you for showing up today and supporting uh, the show. And we would love to have you back on uh, in the future because I think you bring a lot to, to the conversation in terms of recruiting on what's going on in the state of Georgia basketball and what's going on nationally in the state of basketball. Well, I appreciate uh, you guys basketball. having me on. And before you leave, please let everybody know where they can find you. Yeah, go to hoopscene.com, H-O-O-P-S-E-E-N.com, or make sure you follow us on Twitter. If you're here in the state of Georgia, also follow us at HoopsceneGA on Twitter where we cover just the state of Georgia. And uh, we're out pretty actively with our staff uh, covering high school games across the, the great Peach State. For uh, Desmond Eastman, I'm Horace Naismith. Thanks for joining us on The Hardwood.